Okay, let's get started. In order for us to export a SolidWorks assembly into uh, MATLAB's Simscape um, uh, environment, we need to make use of the uh, Simscape mechanical uh, import tool. To get that, we can just download it off the uh, internet from MathWorks website. So first off, if we just do a quick search for the Simscape multibody link uh, plugin, you'll find that uh, there's instructions for how to do it. So it's four steps. Basically, uh, click and download the, um, the scripts and the uh, zip file. Then uh, install it, register a MATLAB server, and then if you're using, say, SolidWorks like I am, to uh, enter the command prompt of smlink underscore link uh, sw. So if you, in your own time, go through and follow these instructions, uh, you'll be able to get it all set up. So now we're going to focus on actually going through that process of taking the SOLIDWORKS model and importing it into Simscape. So let's look at how we do that. So first off, we need to create an uh, assembly in SOLIDWORKS. So we can create a uh, new part, for example. Let's create a simple link. So on the front plane, let's just draw a simple straight slot and just to mention that and we'll just draw in some circles which uh, will allow for us to create a um, revolute joint between subsequent links so we'll just to mention those as well now you can choose any length and any uh, diameter uh, these just happen to be ones that I've chosen. So once we've defined our sketch, we can do a boss extrude. So a boss extrude, a boss extrude along the z-axis of magnitude of 10 millimeters. Okay. So now we've got a part, and we'll just specify the material as 1060 alloy. Cool. So we've got a part, and we can add that now into our assembly. So we'll just save that, and browse to a directory where we want to save that in. So I'm going to put it into my into my directory there and I'm going to create a new assembly and I'm just going to import my new link model. So now I've got a simple link and I've got to define how it's uh, constrained within the three-dimensional space. So what I can do is create a mate. Now if I make sure the uh, part is floating then I can define a relationship between the um, this link and the assembly's uh, um, origin. So if I click on origin and origin and I can mate them and I just I won't align the axes uh, just because I want to have um, some degrees of freedom. If I align the axes, then everything becomes fixed. So now the uh, origin of my link is coincident with the origin of my uh, coordinates, uh, of the assembly's coordinate system. Now, I want it to be able to rotate around the z-axis. So what I can do is create a um, coincident constraint, uh, or coincident mate, uh, between the link's front plane and the assembly's front plane. So if I go ahead and do that, then uh, what I essentially have is one degree of freedom uh, about the um, axis through this first uh, um, extruded hole here. So now that I've got a part and I've got it defined, uh, it's constrained, I can export it. And the um, tool that we've downloaded and installed will automatically realize that that constraint is a revolute uh, joint, which will then uh, populate the Simscape model uh, with. So if we go to our um, uh, tools, you should see that Simscape multibody link is there. If it hasn't come up, it's because you probably haven't done the um, tools add-ins. 
and added in the Simscape multi-body link. So, so tools, Simscape multi-body link, export Simscape multi-body. Um, before we do that, though, maybe a point out that in settings you can change the uh, type of file that is exported. So if you wanted to, say for example, export an STL, uh, you just need to select it. So there's a few other properties that you can uh, choose. Currently we're just going to look at the uh, second generation um, multi-body uh, um, library rather than the first generation. So if you click on Simscape multi-body and we're going to just export our uh, model as, and I'm going to call mine linkage underscore one because I've only got one linkage. And what it'll do is it'll call up the uh, MATLAB server and then execute the code and export the model. And here we have the uh, window coming up saying, yep, it's been done correctly. So if we click OK, and we can now come to our MATLAB and use the SMIM port. Yep, so it's yep, SMI port. And we're going to import the uh, linkage underscore one XML. And so it'll do its thing and quickly import it and populate a new uh, model. So just while waiting, uh, what we should have is the new uh, SLX model being created. So that's what we've got here. And we should also see that if we look we should have a linkage underscore one uh, data file. So here we go. So that has uh, a script of all the specific transformation values. So if you wanted to, you can go and read through that, or you can actually read uh, the linkage underscore one dot XML file. So here we have a, uh, a configuration. We've got a ground. There's a transformation between the uh, ground and the origin of our um, part but it should work out to be zero. We have a revolute joint between our ground through to our link. So if we run this, we should get a uh, short video of the link moving. Now, it's rotating around the z-axis, which is exactly what we wanted, uh, though it's not particularly easy to see. So what we can do is just reset the model and right-click on the uh, window here and change it to say an isometric view. It's about the uh, z-axis, so that's probably yeah. I guess that that's okay. Uh, we can also add in things like frames. So here's a coordinate system that uh, is attached to our uh, base and also to the origin of this link. And we can also see things like the center of mass. So if we just step through our simulation, oh, step through our simulation, we see it moves, and you notice that the x and y axis also rotate. So we have the frame attached to the base of our system, and the frame that's attached to our first link, and you can see that they're moving relative to each other. So some angle could be measured uh, about the z axis from this um, uh, x axis through to the link's uh, x axis. So that's about it. We've got our uh, physical system that we've designed in SolidWorks, and we've managed to import that into our um, into our uh, Simscape uh, environment. Now that's in our Simscape environment, we can start doing other things like measuring displacement or um, uh, uh, driving a particular joint with a desired torque. So I'd recommend you have a look at some of my other videos on uh, Simscape and uh, I'll be adding more to them uh, as time goes on. So thanks for watching.